Animals are very important because they are useful to man. They serve as food in form of beef, in form of eggs, in form of dairy products, and they also provide security and entertainment. But sometimes they could be injurious to man because they could pose as health hazards. And what exactly are we talking about if not zoonotic diseases, which are diseases that can transmit from animal to man? And that is why we are having today on set a veterinary doctor. We featured her here on this program once before, but we consider it necessary to have her here again. And Dr. Nonye Ukweni, you are welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I was telling your audience we'll be talking about zoonotic diseases. That's technical, but you will guide us on this. What exactly are zoonotic diseases? Okay, so zoonotic diseases are a group of different diseases, viral, bacteria, parasitic, which could be give, um, transmitted to humans directly or indirectly through animals. It could be through the environment, through a vector, or through um, contact with animals, yeah. Okay, you said these diseases could be transmitted directly or indirectly. What exactly do you mean by that? Directly, let's start with that. Okay, directly is when you're in contact with the animal. That means maybe the animal is transmitting it from itself, either through aerosols from itself to the person in contact with it, maybe through bites or maybe through um, maybe ingesting um, feces from the animals mistakenly, obviously, or maybe um, the animal goes and pollutes your food and then you eat it. That's a direct contact. Or probably you have a wound on your hand and maybe the saliva of the animal mistakenly touches it and you could get a disease through that means. That's direct contact. And when you say indirect contact, what do you mean? Indirect contact could be maybe the person eats something that has been contaminated. For example, now a meat is in the market, someone touches it, goes to the um, open, had, had opens her door knob, and then a child comes and touches the door knob and gets maybe something like tuberculosis from there. That's an indirect contact. That's basically getting it from the environment. You could also get it through vectors, like um, for example, um, a tick on your dog gets to your body, transmitting diseases from your dog to your body or fleas or different there are different modes of getting it indirectly but it's basically getting it through the environment water food we drink anything that doesn't have involved direct relations with the animal that is transmitting the disease thank you very much zoonotic diseases that's what we are talking about now tell us what exactly are these diseases we know they are from animal to man so can you mention them elaborately? Tell us what these are. Okay, zoonotic diseases are as broad as they are vague, like they are plenty. So let's just basically classify them into um, their basic natures. Let's start with the viruses. You have viral zoonotic diseases. Under viruses, you have diseases like rabies. You have diseases like anthrax. You have diseases like um, erysipelas. You, you have diseases like... Um, you have several other diseases, pox disease, you have the avian influenza that was killing a lot of um, chickens, you have Ebola, you have Lassa, Lassa virus. Then you talk about viral diseases, sorry, bacteria now, bacterial disease, you talk about diseases like tuberculosis, you talk about diseases like brucellosis, leptospirosis, listeriosis, these are bacterial diseases that cause, that can be transmitted from animals to humans. Then you talk about parasitic diseases. Let's start with um, um, protozoal diseases like the toxoplasmosis. You heard where they say pregnant women should not have relationship with cats. So that's because they could get um, disease like toxoplasmosis. Um, you've also heard where they say young children should not play with dogs. That's children zero to five years old should not play with dogs. That's because they could get diseases like worms, like toxocara. Ascaris and all these toxicara species from right. dogs. Now, yeah. before we go too deep, I want us to tread back a little. Okay. Pregnant women shouldn't play with um, cats. cats. Yeah. Why? What exactly is wrong here? I want you to shed more light on that. Okay. You know, 
when you talk about diseases you actually talk about carrier some 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 animals are carriers some are reservoirs that means they could have these um microorganisms disease causing microorganisms that are in the case and then not show any sign that they are sick because they are not sick because they are just reservoirs that means they, they just carry this up and down so cats have the tendency to have um, a lot of toxoplasmosis in them so this toxoplasma um oocyst, you know they are plasmodium organisms protozoa organisms so they don't they don't reproduce in eggs, they don't reproduce in larvae, they reproduce in oocysts. So these oocysts are airbound. They could easily be shed when the when the cat is, you know, cats poo. So when the cat is breathing in and breathing out, when the cat poos, is also in the feces. So you see, all these things can enter into dust particles and the and the pregnant woman inhales it. it. Now you see, pregnancy has a tendency to reduce. The, the woman's defense mechanism that is what actually makes her reset and um, susceptible to getting diseases like this and then you see toxoplasma is something that could go into the system and cause havoc for just not the woman but also the baby okay then what are the symptoms now of toxoplasma yes on the woman okay you, um it's basically a fatal thing you see you can have things like um congenital malformations you can also have things like steel beds you can have things like um abortion now this is not just common to toxoplasmosis please don't kill the cats the cats are very important but it's just it's just necessary that maybe during the period of pregnancy women should abstain from cats okay. so cats are really lovable so what we're trying to say is diseases like brucellosis too affect pregnant women and could also cause stillbirths and abortion so you see these zoonotic diseases are neglected but they're actually um a cause of 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 crisis it could actually result in a pandemic okay you talked about anthrax yes. what exactly is that anthrax is a pig disease this time it's a disease that um it's it's messy it's a viral disease that when it comes into a pig farm <laughs> pig farmers will know that it's it's something that they don't even want to have to deal with it's the bird flu of pigs so it's it's a viral disease that affects the blood system so it goes and causes systemic malformation so it's that deadly and it could also be deadly like that in humans so when it's a reportable disease whenever a farm is found to have anthrax you report it to the government authorities the government authorities ensure that that farm is quarantined and the pigs there are called okay i have cats and dogs at home yeah we Any all do. chance of me contracting any of these illnesses well, you see that's that's the problem with zoonotic diseases actually you stand a chance to get zoonotic diseases if you don't have proper bi um, biosecurities in place when i talk about biosecurities in place i'm talking about the fact that maybe you're not keeping your animals clean maybe you're not brushing their teeth maybe you're not baiting them maybe you have you allowing them have contact with stray animals which is bad they could get diseases from there and give it to you maybe you are lying rats come in contact <laughs> like i saw a video a rat was practically fighting with a cat <laughs> i mean so you see these kind of things actually are the kind of interactions that we're trying to say no to try and exterminate as much as possible some certain animals when you have pets in the house maintain your personal self hygiene wash wash your hand after petting after petting your 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 ford animal whatever animal you have and there should be ground rules whenever you have animals okay we keep talking about animals now we yeah. said that from them we could um, get infected with diseases now is it all animals what animals are implicated here okay so when you talk about zoonotic diseases some animals have diseases that are specific to them which they can specifically transmit to humans some animals can't transmit that disease to humans but it doesn't mean that all animals don't have their unique disease they can transmit to humans so no sick disease is not selective of any animal you see ticks transmit disease cattle transmit diseases goats transmit diseases chicken transmits diseases so it's it's broad like that monkeys transmit diseases bats transmit diseases so zoonotic disease is not something that you see a dog owner and say oh i'm safe i don't have a dog so i can't get disease i can't get a zoonotic disease no 
you're very wrong there because no matter what you do you definitely be in contact in interaction with with animals daily so it's not a one person thing it's an everybody thing it's an every animal can can spread the thing in other words virtually all the animals are suspect in this regard <laughs> if all not what animals you are, to say? are incriminated yes okay thank you very much for that now i want to ask are some people more susceptible or more vulnerable to contracting these infections from animals than others? Yes, some, some people are more susceptible to contacting zoonotic diseases than others. For example, veterinary doctors are at risk in contacting zoonotic diseases because their work, their work line is called occupational hazard. It keeps them in the forefront because by the, by the people who actually fight, by the first line of defense for zoonotic diseases, by the first people you call to come and um, inspect your meat, to come and do stuff. So by the ones who come in contact with these diseases daily. So you see, occupation can, can make you an attract person. You own a dog, you're a dog breeder, you have a lot of interaction with dogs, you're at risk. You have diseases like HIV, malaria, or anything that can reduce your immunity, you are at risk. You're a child between zero to five years old, your immune system is not yet developed, you are at risk. You're an, you're an elderly person above 65 years old, your immune system are still, are still waning, you are at risk. So um, you're living in a dead environment, you're living in an overcrowded environment, basically you're at risk. So you see, it's, the list goes on and on. Thank you very much. The list goes on and on. Yes. And viewer, this is Health Matters on OSROC TV. My guest, Dr. Nonye Upwini, has been doing much talking here. And we are talking about zoonotic diseases, which are animal-to-man diseases, if I may put it that way. We still have quite a lot to talk about. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is Health Matters. My guest, Dr. Ukwini, is still very much around. She's a veterinary doctor and we are talking about zoonosis or zoonotic diseases. Diseases that could be transmitted from animal to man. And my guest, once again, I welcome you. Thank you very much. Now, I want you to tell us, we have been talking elaborately about these animals and we've been talking about the diseases. How best do you think we can handle these animals so that we do not get any infection from them? Okay, first and foremost, kudos to all the veterinary doctors out there. My bosses, my colleagues were doing a great job at ensuring the public is at least safe. Because as I said earlier, we are the first line of defense. We inspect meat, we ensure that meat that goes to the public is, not, is, is wholesome for eating. So that's the first thing. The most important thing is you have a dog, you have a cat. You have whatever pets please have a vet alongside a, a dog a cat don't just go owning all these animals and then not taking proper care of them because <clears throat> they are reservoirs for diseases as i've said earlier um also aside from treating your, your dogs please vaccinate vaccination prevents a lot of diseases from being in an active form whereby they can be transmitted also personal hygiene it, it cannot be overestimated it cannot be overemphasized you need to wash your hands whenever you finish touching your pets. If you have kids zero to five years old, don't get don't get them pets yet. Just allow them to grow up and let their immune system develop more, and then um, do that. Also, the government has a lot a, a very wild part to play in surveillance, control, monitoring of diseases. All these things are the reasons why you see zoonotic diseases keep popping up. 
because there is no proper surveillance, there is no proper control measures, there is no proper, there are no proper things put in place to to check meat. The fact that um, animals don't come so close to human settlements and spread diseases. Yeah, so all these factors put together can help at least reduce the emergence of zoonotic diseases. All right. Now, what's the prevalence like? How rampant are these diseases in our society? Okay. Rabies is actually endemic in Nigeria. Rabies? Yes. And rabies is a disease that once someone gets it, it's a it's 100% thing that the person is going to die. If if post-exposure prophylaxis was not taken into consideration. I don't need to tell you the statistics on tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is everywhere. Millions are dying from tuberculosis. Um, brucellosis is something that it's, it's actually causing havoc, but people don't really talk about it either. Then you, you talk about diseases like leptospirosis that comes up every rainy season because um, water is everywhere, water logged, and rats are everywhere. Rats are no longer outside because rain is falling. Rats are now in our houses taking shelter. So you see these diseases, are, they are here. And Nigeria is practically harboring them because people are not talking about these things. You hear the government saying, kick out Lassa fever, um, ensure rats don't stay in your house. It's not because we don't want to, we, we don't want you to have rats as pets, it's because they're actually harboring diseases. Now, if, if I'm to shock you, I'll tell you that the same, Lassa fever and Ebola, are this, they are almost the same strain of virus. They are subspecies of the same virus. So you see, a rat that can harbor um, Lassa fever also has the ability to transmit Ebola. And we remember how the, the, the country was in panic the last time Ebola um, came out. So these, these things have to be put in place to ensure that um, proper measures are taken, uh, actually put in place to ensure that we are safe and we are trying to protect ourselves too. Thank you very much. Now let's talk about the treatment okay. of this. How do you treat patients who have come down with um, zoonosis? Okay, so zoonotic diseases are very wild. You treat diseases based on the clinical signs, based on the causative agent. If it's a viral disease, you treat it with um, the, um, drugs meant for viral diseases. Maybe you use antiviral um, drugs. For drugs, drugs like um, tuberculosis, you use um, antibiotics, strong antibiotics like rimpanvin, acetiazide, you use antibiotics like um, streptomycin. Then for leptospirosis, you use antibiotics like ampicillin. So this shows you that these diseases are wild. So as much as they are wild, the doctors in the, in the different health sectors, they know the particular medication to administer to treat them. Thank you very much. Now, before we go to prevention, you talked about Ebola. You talked about rabies. Which animals exactly are implicated here? In Remember, it, Ebola itself is a very deadly disease, and at the time it was, um, it made the news. So I would want you to tell us more about that. So Ebola is mostly transmitted by primates, pri um, non-human primates, which are monkeys. Remember that time they were like monkeys? No, don't go near monkeys. <laughs> so monkeys were in trouble then. But it's mostly monkeys. Bats are also reservoirs of Ebola. You see, bats, there are different types of bats. There is the vampire bat, the fruit bat, and I've forgotten the last one. <laughs> so you see, bats are actually transmitted, and um, they also transmit these um, diseases. So it's mostly primates that transmit Ebola. So rabies is actually transmitted by dogs, dog bites mostly. But bats also are reservoirs for rabies virus. So you see, when rats or bats come and bite your dog and you don't know, you don't know that your dog was bitten and your dog starts acting funny, there's the paralytic stage of rabies, the prodromal stage where the dog is not showing any sign, and then the excitability stage where the dog is biting everybody. You see them shouting, ah, the dog is drawn mad. That's a sign of rabies. So you see, this, um, this clinical signs vary just like the host range varies. And in all these zoonotic diseases, it's something that can be gotten from just about any stray animal that comes in contact with your pet, then the pet transmits it to the human. Now, let's talk about prevention. How do we prevent all this? Prevention, they say, is better than cure. True. So the best way to prevent it is vaccination. Vaccinate your pets. 
stick to your, your pet vaccination. Keep your pets away from children you don't know. Because humans can also transmit diseases to animals. It's not just an animal to human thing. Keep your pets away from people you don't know. Try as much as possible to maintain biosecurity in your farm. Don't just allow just about any vet match into your farm because you don't know the farm they've been to. Like, for example, I know someone who, whose farm came down with anthrax because the vets went from under farm to under farm. So this kind of biosecurity measures should be put in place. Um, disinfectants should not lack in your home. Every home should have a source of disinfectant to wash their hands and to ensure kids are properly taken care of. Pregnant women should avoid cats for now till they give birth. Um, or at least even if they have cats, they should keep them clean with a clean health record too. Um, and also surveillance and disease monitoring should be carried out more effectively by the government. As a veterinary doctor, would you for any reason call for the execution of any animal because it has come down with some diseases and because you fear it might transmit that to humans? Yes. Yes, I will. And on what grounds? If, if, if a disease is something that is transmitted to human, when I was in vet in med school, the first thing they, they tell you, they teach you, is safety first. Safety first. If an animal is um, has been judged to be um, unwholesome for human consumption, that's the carcass, it is, it is trimmed off if it needs to be trimmed off or totally condemned. If on atimotem infection, that's before the animal is dead, you find out that this animal is unfit for human consumption. Probably it has something like botuli um, botulism. Botulism is a, is a disease that affects the nerves. You see, when someone eats an animal that has botulinum in it, or maybe an animal that, that died from mad cow disease, the person has the, the ability to come down with something like, like um, encephalitis. So you see, all these things, the human, finally, the human beings are public health advocates advocate for human health as well as animal health too. But if an animal is going to be a threat to the, to, to the human population, it's advised to call the animal. To call the animal. Yes. And how do you do that? You, you um, slaughter the animal and bury it in, in nothing less than six feet below the ground. And finally, let's have your counseling. What advice will you give to the public? I love animals so, so much. I have dogs. I, have, I had a cat when I was growing up. So my passion for animals can never be underestimated. I love animals so much. My, my counsel is, if you have an animal, please, as much as possible, own, have a vet too. If you have an animal, have a vet. Keep up with your animal's um, vaccination and treatment regime. And also, as much as possible, keep your animal away from stray dogs stray anything let them stay in your house they are pets for a reason if they if they don't stay indoors they should have their own kennel where they stay so that you ensure that they are not coming in contact with different type of animals and if you if you have maybe if your animals are sick don't hesitate to call the vet a lot of people go calling quacks which complicates issues don't hesitate to call the vet if your dog is sick take him to the vet to be treated or your animal is sick take him to the vet to be treated animals are supposed to be loved and taken care of by we that that went to go and domesticate them and keep them in our house so yeah it's world donuts day and this, this is just a day that we talk about diseases that can affect human beings through animals. Thank you very much. Sure. Do not let your animals to stray around because they could um, contract infection from other animals and try to take your animal to the vet whenever it has come down with a disease. And Dr. Nonye Ukweni, yes, I hope some other time we'll be here together again sure. and viewer thank you very much for watching us for some time you've been listening to my guest a veterinary doctor Nanye Ukwini, who has been telling us quite a lot about zoonotic diseases in all she enjoins you all to be very careful in dealing with animals if your animal has come down with any disease take him to the vet where he will be attended to this is how far we can go on today's episode of Health Matters, your TV health show. Your Mio Gunye is my name. Do find time to join us again same time next week.